Hi everyone, Mike here. The soccer season has just started here in the UK and to celebrate, in this video, I'm going to create a soccer results tracker. Now, when the word tracker is mentioned, everyone has their own ideas as to what it should look like, how it should be laid out, what colours to use, what should and shouldn't be included. Should it be on a single sheet or multiple sheets? My opinion is that things like trackers and dashboards are a personal thing. You'll find plenty of blog posts and videos on the web about tracker and dashboard design, but ultimately it's up to you. As this is a short video, the tracker that we'll end up with is a fairly simple one. But assuming you're here to learn and not just to be entertained, the idea is that you take away concepts and principles from this tutorial. And with that, I'll make a start. I'm going to be tracking the results from my team, Manchester United. I'm going to pull the data in from a web page. You could just as easily type the match details directly into Excel. There's lots of websites that I could use, but for this video, I'm using footballwebpages.co.uk. I'm actually going to use this page which has the Manchester United results from last season. Why last season, not this season? Because at the time of recording, there's only been one match played, so it wouldn't really be much of a demo tracker. I'm going to bring the data in from that web page and put it into the results sheet that I've got here. I do that by clicking data from web. I can then either type in or paste in the URL and click on OK. Once a connection has been made to that website, it lists all the tables that it finds. And if I click on them, it's not that table, but it's this table. This is the table that contains the data that I want to bring in. Now I'm not going to click on load because that will load the data into a new sheet and I want to load the data into the results sheet. So click the drop down arrow next to load and select load two. Leave it set to table, but choose existing worksheet and choose the cell where you want the data to be loaded into. I'll leave it as A1 and click OK. The data is brought in. I'm going to close this queries and connections panel down. And also the data is brought in as a table. If I go to the table design ribbon, you can see the table is called table underscore zero. I'm going to change the name of that table to results underscore tracker. You can't have spaces in your table names. I've chosen to use an underscore or I could have just put results tracker. Press enter and that has renamed the table. Now, looking at that data, it obviously needs cleaning up. So to do that, I'll use the query editor. How much cleaning and exactly what cleaning depends on one, what state the data is in, and two, what you want the finished data set to look like. So the Power Query features I use may be different to the ones you use. I'm going to go to Data, Get Data, Launch Power Query Editor. The first thing I'm going to do is change the name of the HA column to Venue, simply by double clicking on the column heading and typing in Venue. I'll do a similar thing with KO slash score. I want to change that column heading to just score. A double T D, I want to be attendance. And I don't want the score as column at all. So I'll click on home choose columns and untick scorers and click on OK. The next thing I'll do is change the data type of some of the columns. So you'll notice that the date column has an ABC next to it, which indicates that the data in that column is text. That's actually the same for all of these columns. So if I click on the ABC and click on date, it now converts all of those text entries into dates. We do have some errors and those errors were caused because there were some cells that didn't actually have dates in them, but I'll deal with those in a minute. 
I also want to change the data type of the attendance column from text to whole number. So I click the ABC and I select whole number. And now those are treated as numeric values. So if I wanted to do calculations like uh, get the total attendance or the average attendance, I can now do it. To remove the rows with errors, I click on Home, Remove Rows, Remove Errors. The next thing I need to do is to deal with the score column. I actually need the score, which is the data between the closing bracket and the opening bracket. I need that to be extracted and then I need to split that into two columns to ultimately show goals scored and goals against. So I'll have to do that in two steps. Select the score column and go to transform extract text between delimiters. A delimiter is a character or a string of characters. The start delimiter is the close bracket. The open delimiter is the open bracket and click OK. And then I want to split what I've got now into two separate columns. Stay on the score column, go to transform, split column by delimiter. The delimiter is not the space, it's guessed at that. It's a custom delimiter in this example, which is space dash space and click OK. It's space dash space because that is what is between the two numbers. And then finally rename the two column headings. Score one is going to be four, so it's goals four or goals scored, and score two is goals against. And then finally, I only wanted the Premier League matches. So what I'll do there is click the drop down arrow against competition and untick everything and only select Premier League. So now my data is ready to be used. As I said earlier, how much cleaning you do and exactly what cleaning commands you use depends on your data and what you want the final result or the final data set to look like. But now I'll click File, Close and Load. Now you could leave it at that. It's a tracker. It's keeping track of results. As I said at the start, this is last season's matches. But if it was this season's, you'd want the list to update as matches are played. And to do that, simply hit Data, Refresh All. And it goes out to that website, grabs the data, loads it in here. But not only does it do that, it also performs all of those actions that I set up in the query editor. OK, to make it a bit more interesting from both a real life point of view and a demo point of view, I'm going to add a few things to the tracker. You'll notice that I've got two sheets here, home and away. I'm going to put the home matches in the home sheet and the away matches in the away sheet. And I want those to update as well. Now, I'm not going to go back and create another two connections to that same data source and just filter out for home and away. I'm going to do it in a different way. I'm going to start by copying the column headings and pasting them in A1 on the home sheet and A1 in the away sheet. Then go to the home tab and in A2, I'm going to create a formula which pulls out just the home results, just the results where venue equals H from this table, which is called results underscore tracker. So back to the home tab and equals filter. So I'm using the filter function. Not every version of Excel will have this. So if you don't have it, it's because your version is an older version. It doesn't have it. Equals filter, open brackets. The range to filter is the table, which I called results tracker, comma. And what I want to include is only the entries, only the rows where the venue equals H. So I put results tracker, open square bracket, and double click on venue, close square bracket, equals, and then in double quotes, H close brackets. 
So I'm filtering from the results tracker table only the entries where the venue column in the results tracker table equals H. And without me doing anything, it pulls that data across. Now I need to make a couple of changes. I need to set those cells to be date format. I'll go for long date. I'll also make those cells align to the left. I just think it looks neater and I can change the column widths as well. The reason there's a zero for the attendance in that match against Liverpool is because the data is missing in the original uh, website. Now, rather than retyping that whole formula for the away, I will just copy the formula, go to the away sheet, click on A2 and paste, and then change the H to an A and do the same thing. Change the column widths and format the cells in column A as long date format and align them to the left. You can do all kinds of other things as well with statistics, create as many stats as you like. You can put them on a separate sheet or one of the existing sheets. So you could have the number of goals scored broken down by home and away. You could have the total number of people who've watched the average attendance, all that kind of stuff. Just do that with standard Excel formulas. The filter function, by the way, will automatically update. I know this is last season's results, but if I did a refresh on here and the data updated, then it would automatically update these two as well. So that's it. A match tracker for your favorite soccer team. Did you find this video useful? If you did, please give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you'd like to keep up to date with what I'm up to, why not sign up to my weekly newsletter, which you can do at theexceltrainer.co.uk. But until the next time, have an excellent day.